Ah, uh, yeah, we both in this hole. What's up, what's up, what's up? Let me bacon call it down. Hey, what's up? So, hey, we already high here. Already for the high cast. Thank y'all for tuning the fuck in this bitch. This is something new and different that I wanted to try because I'm like, man, I'm trying to put on and show y'all all the people that I genuinely fuck with, not just motherfuckers that... Yeah, I'm supposed to fuck with Fuck that really? I'm breaking the rules On this hoe So right now I'm gonna introduce y'all To one of Houston's Underground For now As Dope ass Motherfucking stand up comedians I've been watching this nigga I've been going around Cause I like to go to comedy shows And look Cause I really fucks with it Not the copy niggas It's lower <laughs> But to actually support niggas And so Me and this nigga I, I told this nigga Hey bro I'm starting a high cast And like nigga I want to bring you on this hoe Because nigga I fucks with your craft Nigga sure. And I fucks with this nigga Himself So Genuinely Hey I want to welcome My motherfucking nigga Ray Etc And this motherfucking nigga What's yeah, up bro Oh let me hey. put some respect On your name Comedian hey. Comedian Ray Etc Yeah I'm, yeah, I done moved up I get paid to do this shit My motherfucking was So look 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 my thing is, people, introduce yourself to everybody. Let them know who the fuck you is, where man. you're from, all the good shit yes, about Lord, you. man. Hey, I mean, I say I appreciate the introduction. He a real Houstonian. He know, he know, he, and he got to <laughs> tell his hood. He said, where you from? <laughs> yeah, a nigga from South Park, South Side, man, to be exact with her. Man, 37 years old, man, got in the game. Quick, man, I got in there about, about four or five years ago, man, and, and didn't take no shit early on. Got in the hotel talking my shit. Didn't go by none of their rules. <laughs> I learned what... You're supposed to do and not to do early on, man. And once once I learned that, man, I took over the game, man. And shit, you can see, I'm, that's how I'm able to fuck with niggas like yourself, goddamn it. That's what the fuck I'm talking. I wasn't funny. I wasn't funny. I fuck around and be a waiter to you. Or <laughs> hey, that. So look, I right, so what made you? Cause you know I'm in this stand-up comedy yeah. shit. I was gonna do some questions, but like I'm just gonna ask real shit. Yeah, like, let's talk some shit. You know I come from social media, yeah. and you coming directly from the stage yes. to now. I want you to. I'm, I really want to welcome your ass more to yeah. social media, especially to my people on my platform because they fuck with genuine people and yes, they know sir. I'm not gonna fuck yes, with no, no fuck ass niggas. Yeah. And so my thing is like for yourself, like um, how hard is it? it is like. Is it is it harder for you to was it harder for you to learn stand up on the stage as it is right now trying to learn social media? Oh my god! I'm gonna say, man, the 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 social media is by far more harder to me now. Mm. <clears throat> And it's just because of shit. It, you th you may think this shit funny, but you you know what I'm saying. You don't get yeah. no response until you don't see no views on your shit. <laughs> <laughs> but man, the stay I, I tell people that all the time. Man, I started I started from the bottom, different, just on some backwards type of shit. Yeah. Just to because I want I knew the stage was gonna to me I ain't gonna say outlast, but I knew my longevity point was to be a month on that stage. So I made sure that that was the first thing I attacked, and then shit too. Shit, nigga could be on his phone, but I was still in the house. I was trying to get the fuck out of the yeah. house. I was like, man, I, man, let me go to a club and see how this shit rocking, man. And I really went. I was going to clubs and just chilling like you was doing, just chilling, mm -hmm. just trying to see the scene before I even got into this shit. And the so-called OGs and all that shit, I don't think they was giving love like they was supposed to, nigga. So I mm -hmm. said, fuck it, I'm gonna jump in this shit and do it the way. Shit, let me. I was already old school in this bitch. Them niggas, man, them niggas tried to make me lie about my age when I first got in this shit. Man. A promoter told me to tell a club, nigga. I was 30, I think I was 32, 33. 33 when I got nigga. in. Going on 35, that nigga say, man, won't you see all these people? You 29. Lie to them. Nigga, nigga, get the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> say, bitch, my knees gonna tell it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so like, so with, with it, you saying it's harder? It's harder for the online way. I think it's I, I, um, I for me personally, just off the street that I came from, some on some street shit, just to not have that. We you know we preached on that shit. Like man, mm -hmm. you can keep all your business off the internet, off social media, all that kind of shit. And we used to, I used to literally rank on niggas that used to put their life, me their too. life. <laughs> on. Like nigga, you got the whole world on about your shit. Social media, and yeah. these same niggas laughing at me now because they getting paid a bankroll to do this shit now. And I'm like, man. But once again. I'm not changing my morals for this shit. I just know what to put out on it. You know what I'm saying? I know I ain't finna put my, my bad life and all this shit, but I know I know it's definitely a platform that that it can stand both ways. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. can I can because I, 
I catch myself now telling the street niggas in my in my realm, like, nigga, you should jump on social media. These niggas be looking at me like, like nigga, nigga, man, you better get the fuck out of my face with this shit. But when I explain <laughs> it to them, what can happen and all that shit, I'm like, nigga, you can get paid for saying some of the dumbest shit ever. You're like, nigga, what? As opposed, dumb to getting, shit. <laughs> as opposed to getting your ass kicked for saying some dumb shit. But. And so, and like, um, with me coming from social media, I feel like stand up is harder. Cause you know I just started doing stand up now about two years now. Yeah, so yeah. for me, stand up is harder than social media. Appreciate you, my boy. Uh, stand up is harder than than social media because stand up is really something that they how they school me. Like you gotta, it's like a script. And that's you just why the it's script. hard, man. That's why it's hard. It, it's because people try to put their they try to put they they experience on you or they goddamn me uh this is how they told me to do it yeah. like and this is not a game to where you have a full etiquette man if this was if this was how to be uh, a carpenter and all this kind of stuff where you had certain rules to put mm -hmm. these kind of stuff together, then I understand. But this is comedy. Whether you, however you laugh, mm -hmm. it's how you, you laugh. I'd rather somebody laugh at some shit that's unorthodox then, than you to not laugh at a joke that I properly written. And you know what I'm saying? Type shit. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. But that's the lane that you have to take down. You have to say, man, I create. That's why I like when I hear social media guys say, man, I make people laugh in the way I make people laugh. Mm -hmm. Like and the only thing is transferring that same shit to the stage, and if you can transfer it to the stage, it's the you a comedian. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because that's how I go. Yeah. It's like I've watched some of the social media people I seen try to do like yeah. uh, stand up, and like when they when they was doing it, I was like, uh, yes, I yeah. seen I seen one. I didn't see this. A lot of niggas shit, but don't there match. was one nigga. You might know who this. Somebody that was in Houston had went. They said rumored. I didn't know. How would I know this? Yeah. Because of the team I was a part yeah. of. They they were like, then they got on the stage, and as soon as he got up there, that nigga just looked left and right, and he just walked off and said, I can't do this. Okay. And I was like, oh shit, bro. Like, so some of them could be coming on that yes. scared, and nigga like me to still get up there and continue working hard doing it. Like, nigga, you wouldn't believe it. can be two people in the crowd. You still wouldn't believe how some niggas get up there and be nervous as fuck. Man, the that's, smaller, that's the better to me. Stay, yeah. I learned one of them, I got nervous when I thought they, they had oversold. They did three shows. Mm -hmm. They oversold the second show, and they didn't want to, do, you know, fuck up their capacity thing. Yeah. And so they did a sec, a third show with eighteen people. I was like, bro, what? I was like, that's gonna be fun, like bro, sitting in the living bro. room. They were like, you yeah. excited about that, yes. Tim? How? How do you like now? Nah, because I know like y'all only used to big crowds yeah. and shit. They gonna feel nah. like they know you. They gonna feel like they know. They gonna feel like, man. But just imagine somebody doing a show with Kevin Hart with eighteen people in it. But that's shit gonna feel like when his living room. He gonna room. fuck he around and know everybody's name. That's cool. He did that living room shit. Yeah, he was, was comfortable dope. as fuck. And his shit. and some people didn't agree that his shit that he did on um, Netflix was funny. A lot of people was man. mad at that shit. Bro. But guess what? I was understanding. He is com comfortable. Bro. This nigga can do what the fuck he want. He can say what the fuck. Bro, and he dog had the best interview. And all I took from the interview is that nigga said, man. I can be all kinds of funny. Hmm. But the funny that I'm being is getting me hundreds of millions, bro. He exactly. ain't said that verbatim, but he said it. He, I understood what he was saying. He was like, man, I don't have, I can't get goddamn uh, Jumanji endorsement on here talking about dick mm -hmm. pussy out there. Exactly. So, and it's, it's just that simple. But people are really look at you like you're a sellout for trying to chase that kind Doing of shit. Doing something or, different or, or, or man, creating your own life. I think this is, the, the, this is what we got to create now. The people that call you a pussy, if I could whoop your ass, I'm not a pussy. <laughs> Get your business. Cause we from Houston, dog. Yeah, we yeah. be ready to fight. Like, That's man, crazy. what's up, dog? I don't care about nigga money status. Like, nigga, Bro, you what? Me a pussy. I'm for the kick, nigga. It is. Man, nigga. they was like Tim. You bucked and said what the who? Nigga, that nigga. You gotta stand your ground, man. Man, see, people be needing to understand. Like, yeah, it's, it's like a real. Bro. There are some comedians that are real. There are some comedians that ain't. There are some comedians that are real and ain't good. Bro. There are some comedians that are real and is. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And then yeah. you got some of the you social media that. on the same other yeah. end. There's some of us that are funny. There are some of us that ain't. Some of us that ain't. That's kind of making it. Some of us that you know. But yeah. it's like if you. It's really about consistency. It consistency. The niggas who take this shit serious. I seen a not a lot of niggas walk away from social media yes. saying, "Bro, it's just too many of us. It's too many niggas doing it now. Wow. It's too many niggas. They scared. They like. Man, I'm not putting on the wig. I'm like, bro, give me what y'all. This bitch right here. 
just 48, 9, on, 40 inches for my birthday. Like, nigga, yeah, I put throw this motherfucker on and well, shit. How much money y'all said y'all paying? Thing niggas don't do? Niggas don't target an audience. And this is prime example. You know you targeting women, nigga. I'm, I mean, I'm fucking with women. Niggas don't think about this shit when they tell their jokes and all this kind of shit. They yeah. like, man, I'm just finna say some shit. And you hope saying what's funny. Nah, nigga, this uh, this all this is a sixty year old crowd, nigga. They don't want to hear shit, but and, and I do that. Jokes. I do that in my introduction, nigga. I ask ages and nigga, yeah. be people in there all the way up to the fifties. Yeah. I be like, it's fifties in here, sixties. Ease people in the shit, nigga. Man, man, niggas don't know what what kind of crowd they talking, so it kind of makes people not know what they want to write, what kind of jokes they trying to mm -hmm. write, trying to fuck with, and I understand that. Yeah. So shit is, you know, I definitely think. So my thing is Nigga. with um what I learned too is about the difference between host and uh the uh when I first came in the game I had yeah. to learn they wanted me to be just specifically a host but I'm aiming towards the position of the the headline yeah. they get the longest time they get the from what it said but sometimes I've been to comedy shows and they had the headliner running people out the crowd while the the 15 minute people kill kill and it's been and you know why it's timing me been me being in this game for some time now i get pissed off sometimes being the headliner and with mm -hmm. that being said the headliner is a great spot just as far as pay wise yeah. <laughs> you be getting paid the most if you're yeah. the headliner but being last when you're on the show with goddamn seven comics like it's 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 definitely gonna take a toll on the crowd, especially if everybody ain't doing a significant amount of time, like mm -hmm. a, a certain amount. Like we playing this shit out, everybody doing seven minutes, eight minutes. Then you had niggas, man. Just imagine ten comics up there, everybody doing fifteen minutes. Bro, these people that sat through damn the two and a half hours. Oh, so by wait. the time they get to you, unless you got them, uh, yeah, yeah. And me personally, I take shit like that as a challenge. I take pride in waking the crowd back up. I take that as a challenge, but. I used to tell a nigga, man, throw me in the middle. I don't give a damn if I'm paid. Like, hey, man, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to sit this bitch to 12, 30, and these niggas in this whole yawn, and now we got to do the violin shit, and, and I got to wake up. Yeah, nigga. it's like, yeah, making me double work. Yeah, but but this is it. This is the game, though, and, why, and I had to ask myself that. That's why I orchestrate my own shows to where I know it ain't finna be eight niggas on the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know I, I'm, I, shit, if I go last, it's finna be three to four people that you'll be ready for me. These people are open us are just what they are. Mm -hmm. They are preparing the stage for the headliner. That's what the people before, if you have a headliner, if you got a show with just five niggas on there and they all headliners, okay, everybody do the same amount of time. But if you got people on here that's opening up and this last niggas who you brought them to see, yeah. That's how that's how you really determine who a real headline is. If this is a person they came to see, yeah. And the openers for that are the people. That's you supposed to not be selfish. Do your little ass time. <laughs> yeah. Get your motherfucking ass off, off stage. the stage. Goddamn. A lot of these niggas. That shit is a drilling rush though. A lot of niggas will be up there and that shit. Them laughs start hitting. You be like, bitch, I ain't finna leave. Yeah, they like and a lot. I, I, I seen that shit happen a lot on yeah. tour too. Like I was like, ah, damn. It's hard, so, man. So what kind of advice you can have for a nigga like me? Because when me coming into this, I, I, I. I come from, I, I ain't really a, a crowd goer. They really begged me to come out. It yep. was like, Tim, come on, man. You, you, this, they was, the first they tried to dangle money. Yep. And I was like, bro, I don't want money. Like, huh. I got money, bro. Like, what, what, what else? They were like, you get to meet the people, the fans. I was like, oh, what? That, I get to meet that the part is amazing. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, yeah, now y'all got me thinking about it. Now what's up? And then I'd get into the game. I, I gave it a... I, Three months, I wrote down my jokes. I yeah. woo -woo. I looked at com comedy comedians, and I was like, I'm not laughing at none of the headliners. I'm laughing at yeah. the the the, the yeah. goddamn 15 second niggas, the, fi the five fish, minute yeah. niggas, y'all, yeah, y'all. No you know that's how. So we honestly, I, I like when I first came in. I was gonna try to do that yeah. in Houston. They had the little comedy. I had. The, I don't know if you was a part of this one. Right there behind address on that back street. Uh, Diallo's. Right there. Yes, Lord. That's where Ali was at. Uh, man, yeah. I, man, I went there every week for about three weeks, and I said, I think I'm, I could do this five minutes. I could do five minutes. Anybody could do five minutes. I got oh, there. My, was this Boy, with, this was, ended it that night. Oh, this is with uh, Lee Rod III was doing. Man, Lee Rod III had I walked up, up in up the pizzazz. That's what it was. It ended up turning up to pizzazz. Bro, my heart was broke because these yeah. niggas got me got got me signed up for sold out Dallas, Texas, and you I don't know nothing. Just, I need to get <laughs> see something, bro. Like, what if I'm cracking the jokes literally? Listen, literally, I'm cracking the jokes in the restroom. Hi, I get edibles in the morning. I'd be sitting there. I, I, would, yeah. I would read my jokes or say them. I knew them by heart. It really wasn't even a reading for me. It was like that time when grandma, that time when mom, 
that time, oh, I already know that. I remember that day, and I just tell yeah. my life, and nobody could tell my life like me. So yeah. it was like, I was hoping that. I was imagining a room full of other high people because if that's my fan base, we all be high and laughing. Why not? And so, nigga, when I killed Dallas, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Bro, I love what? this shit, bro. I can, man, what? One thing I can say about comedy right now, just as much as this street shit is alive, mm -hmm. and I think this is where I, I prospered in some of this shit because I bring that persona to it. But this 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 gangster shit is alive right now in, mm -hmm. in music. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a chance to see people that can be funny in that realm, like it blows people away, bro. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't have some old folks like I looks, I can be any funny. White people funny, any kind of race. I don't give a damn what race is in the crowd, I'm very diverse. Mm -hmm. But it's I love talking to my people. Because my people understand my every part of my lingo. Exactly. Anything I say, they can catch that shit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the that's the perk of people used to always tell me, right, you got to get to the, you got to get to the other side, you got to get to the other side. Man, you know how many black people in this world, nigga? I don't got to get to no side. Like, I just got to get who rock with me, who rock exactly. with me. Exactly. And that's how I'm moving in this. I want my people to rock with me, but shit, whoever rock with me is rocking with me. Because I just want them to know they rocking with me for me. I ain't, don't, don't follow me because you want me to be somebody else. I'm exactly. being myself in this shit. And completely. And this got me, it just done me so some good so far bro and i think with you it'll do you the same way people want to see the same genuine shit you talk online online on stage it's just on stage hey, that's how that's how i look at it i simplify everything in my life mm -hmm. the same shit you talking on goddamn line you could put a stage next to your shit and then walk over there and do the same shit it's literally if them people laugh bro hey I had a good comedy show. Yeah, like people, people got to. And that's the thing. I, I know I can get the crowd. Yeah. Now I'm up here. I be, I be beating myself up about perfecting. But you got to ask yourself crowd. what part of the craft you. If you're trying to be. Tim Bay and I'm just doing this. I'm doing it my way, mm -hmm. bro. You, yeah. it ain't gonna be no blueprint to that. Yo, you gotta make the blueprint to that. Yeah. But if you're trying to jump in the industry as far as how they say things are supposed to be done, mm -hmm. then man, of course, bro. Because listen though, <laughs> this, the only reason I think like that was because remember, I didn't have time to yeah. learn from comedians or nothing. They said, Tim is coming to do a comedy show and yeah. it's sold out. They like, man, you sold out, get, just get yeah. ready. And so imagine what it feel like. I, yeah. I mean, knowing that yeah. I'm coming from social media, then yeah. I'm, I'm already hearing how the, the comedians don't like us, cause we, yeah. so it, it's, I'm, I got all this with no ex experience and it made me just be like. It's not I like, am. it's a jealousy thing. I talk, we, I, we talk about this shit all the time. It's mm -hmm. a jealousy thing. A lot of these niggas, and I can, I'm gonna read between the liner. Yeah. These niggas really jealous that the following from that came up so fast as opposed to these niggas been on this stage for 10 years and yeah. ain't but 50 people at their shows. Yeah. But then they had to see too what made what made the balance and make niggas really chill is when people seen you can book a social media nigga that got a million followers and still have 50 people at your goddamn show. Exactly. Nigga, that shit no. don't mean your shit gonna because be so Because you got bad. assholes that's yeah. online. If you introducing them to a, a, a fucked up person yeah. They're not gonna Support you that long oh, yeah. And a lot of people See that But nowadays The fucked up people Are getting praised It oh, seems yeah. to be So it's like Honestly yeah, I'm becoming yeah. lame If they being, really look being, at it Like Being real is, Being is, real is Yeah Like Being you real like, There's something wrong with you you need, you need help We need Man, help Bro niggas told me That same shit about as far as marriage, niggas like, right, you get married early. I'm like, man, bitch, I'm not finna be out. Nigga, I'm, I treat myself valuable too. Yeah, man. yeah. Keep letting these hoes run through me, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's some real shit, though. I just wrote that joke right now. Keep letting these hoes run. If y'all see it on stage, know I wrote it on Tim show, bitch. <laughs> you know goddamn well, and y'all saw it. <laughs> so, yeah. Shit. I mean, this was a dope ass conversation. Yeah. We're gonna sum this shit up with some basically right now. What what's now for you, and what's what's your future looking like? What are you what are you doing right now, and then what do you have planned for the future? What do you what, what, what's, your, what's your goals? And it's about to be a new year. Yeah. Right now, man, for the for the focus of the top of the year is for whenever a big name come out here, I want to be the first one, one of the first ones they call mm -hmm. as far as a feature or anything. That's a goal for me. Mm -hmm. Just to rub shoulders with these guys to know when you come to somebody's city who's the best out there to call, I do, I dearly care about that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But man, I heard Cat Williams say, man, I got like, I think he said, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I got like 10, 11 specials. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I mean, I understood just as far as leaving your legacy in this game. So man, I'm trying to get as many specials out, many goddamn mixtapes out as I can of me on stage mm -hmm. doing my thing. So when I do get up out of here, there's an everlasting comedic message from a nigga like myself.
Yeah, I, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like and and opening up my own my comedy club is my my last goal, which I had one when I came in the game. That was how I got as popular as I was. That I had my own club, my own personal building. This ain't no goddamn yeah. shack, nigga. This is yeah. a real club. <laughs> And man, I got it popping, bro. And I had niggas from the Ghetto Boys to man, uh, Willie D's coming out here. Everybody come yeah. support, and it made me see how much of a staple it was, and how much, like we said before, laughter is healing. Mm -hmm. And I'm on. I wanted to make sure I put some in the city that can contain it. You know what I'm saying? Years yeah. after I'm gone, man. Comedy, it's gonna be laughter forever, and I want to be a part of that forever. My boy, hey, and I know you is my nigga, and shit, cause cause you aiming just to be the special guest, nigga. I'm, I dare you to aim to be motherfucking the nigga hey. doing that, nigga, cause this is the position that they put me sort of in, but they want me to have a different mindset. So, yeah. like, nigga, yeah, I think you think think bigger than that too. But right now, you get to that first goal, yeah. Look, you got me, nigga. I'm gonna feel like. Like especially if, if if the motherfucker, I'm gonna put this out there because I'm reaching out to the improv because I was wondering why the fuck haven't they picked me yet to do nothing. I'm gonna send my tape, tape in. I'm gonna do it like a beginner person to show them, like, look at my work. It's not to be denied. And in that case, if they don't do it, then I know it's just, I don't know who the fuck. It must be one of my exes working now or something. So um, I'm gonna see this, but if I do that, my nigga, yes, you. And my boy J. Lou from Atlanta, bro, nigga, they don't even understand what the fuck they gonna get when they yeah. see this motherfucking show. And I, I guarantee you that, my nigga. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate you, my boy. And so, we gonna go on. I know you gotta go pick the kids up and shit. And I'm gonna edit the fuck out this shit. And, uh, yeah, that was a... Uh, Today's high cast, I want to thank y'all for tuning the fuck in. This ain't brought to y'all by nobody but me, because I don't need nobody money. And so I want to show y'all who I fucks with genuinely out of here, and they doing their motherfucking shit like I am. And with that shit, I do, oh, hold on, where they can catch you, because you ain't got to let them know where you going to be at on, uh, where you, every week, you, it went off? Yeah. Boom, slide over here, where you going to be at? Damn, man. Man, December 10th, man. Y'all check me out, man. The Houston Underground King of Comedy is doing his first comedy special at Most City Bar and Grill, man. Two shows, eight and ten. And I promise you, this is going to be something that puts a, uh, a, a big den in the game for the city, man. Yes, They're going to understand somebody as my stature in the game this fast, man, to be able to do something this early, man. It's going to be dope, man. So y'all support. Catch y'all next time. Rick Setter on Instagram. Ray Ray Bellard on Facebook, man. And I'm going to be up in that bitch too. So yeah, get y'all tickets and fuck with my boy. And we got this hoe.